Yes. Good evening, everyone. So here actually we have a display of various uh, atomic structures. When I started teaching my children about atomic structures, and I first of all said that John Dalton said that atoms are spherical in shape. The first question from my student was why. I asked my children, you think yourself and tell me how should an atom look like if it is the tiniest particle of any matter. And they came up with different ideas of atomic structure. But one thing was common that they made a hollow center wherein they had put uh, neutrons and protons inside and they had made some circular orbits where electrons are revolving. They, are, they have used various materials to make uh, atomic structures. They have made some, they have used some toy boxes, some toy balls, some chocolate boxes. Uh, and various different creativities you will find in making atomic model. Being inspired by the work of my students, I thought of uh, uh, asking one of my uh, very enthusiastic students of class 9th and 10th, Jamshed and Maria, to prepare an atomic uh, structure using some uh, LED lights. So what they have done is they have uh, tried to make a molecule or a tight iron pair of sodium chloride rather uh, with the help of LED lights and with one uh, small straight set of lights they have tried to make it as a result you will find that the electrons what they are showing here is moving in a spiral direction the electrons are moving spirally here yeah so here we can see here that the electrons are moving in a spiral direction which is not true but according to Rutherford's atomic model he said that electrons revolve in a circular path and if it does so that after every uh, revolution electron will be supposed to lose its energy and slowly and slowly it should fall into the nucleus which is not possible so after seeing this structure I thought of making a model uh, by taking help uh, from the students of class 9th, 10th, 11th and 12th and of course our laboratory technician, Mr. Dharminder, who has helped me to make the electrical circuits, electronic circuits, which was very difficult. And we have to program it even further. Uh, here we see that what I have tried to do is, here it was a model of a sodium chloride, I have tried to make a model of magnesium chloride, wherein uh, you will find that the center of this molecule is a magnesium atom, trying to become magnesium ion by giving, it, giving one electron from its outermost orbit to the chlorine atom, as a result chlorine is becoming chloride atom. Chloride ion. Now, if you will count the number of electrons and protons and neutrons, here you will find that there are uh, 17 protons and 17, uh, 18 neutrons here. So mass number is 35. Mass of number of protons and number of neutrons is called as the sum of that is called as mass number. So the mass number of uh, this chlorine atom is 35, and if we take it the relative atomic mass of the cellular other isotopes it can 35.5 also. But here we are taking only one isotope because taking two isotopes or two other will not be possible in this model. So here we are seeing that in the first orbit there are two electrons as per Boltzmann rule. This is called as K cell having two electrons. Second cell or L cell having eight electrons. Third cell having uh, called M cell has seven electrons. The criteria for stability of any atom is that there should be eight electrons in the outermost orbit. So Chlorine atom has tendency to take one electron from any electropositive metal. So, here you will find that in magnesium, two electrons as usual is in the first orbit, eight electrons as usual in the second orbit, and two electrons in the third orbit M. Now, it is difficult for magnesium to take six electrons to complete this octet. So, what it does is it takes two electrons, it gives its two electrons to two adjacent chloride, uh, chlorine atoms. So that they can form chloride ion. No sooner they form chloride ion, they develop charge. One negative charge because it has gained one negatively charged particle, which is which we are calling as electron. Here also this chlorine atom is gaining one electron, it's becoming chloride ion, and this is magnesium ion having two positive charges because it is losing two electrons. As a result, two protons are becoming excess in the nucleus because number of protons should be always equal to number of electron in any neutral atom. Now this model is based on the most acceptable classical or uh, most acceptable model of any atom which is called as Bohr's atomic model. And uh, we started learning about atoms, uh, atomic structure for, from uh, 
the theory given by Dalton's atomic theory, who said that atom is nothing but a particle which cannot, cannot be divided further. Uh, wherein the word atomy means a particle which cannot be divided, atom. So he gave Dalton's atomic theory according to which he says that all matters are made up of atoms. This death, this material, or anything around us is made up of atom. All matters, uh, all atoms of a given element are identical in mass and properties. Uh, say if we talk about the atoms of this wood, then all the atoms in this wood will be identical in properties, that's what he said. This was the discrepancy in his theory. This electron we have found. Compounds are formed by combination of two or more different kind of atoms. That is true, we are seeing that we have more than two different type of atoms that combining to form molecules. And a chemical reaction is rearrangement of the atoms. We are seeing a particular arrangement of the atoms here. See, in sodium chloride there is a particular arrangement. In magnesium chloride there is a particular arrangement. So atoms, they rearrange themselves to form a particular type of a uh, molecule. Again, in Thomson's model, uh, the structure of the atom was given in such a way, uh, and this was compared with a plum pudding or maybe a fruit, wherein the plum of the fruit was considered as a sphere of positive charge, and the seeds in that uh, fruit or the uh, pudding, uh, the plum in the pudding was considered to be the electrons distributed in the sphere of positive charge. He did not talk about the position of an electron or position of the positively charged particles, but he said the whole mole whole atom is a sphere of positive charge. And obviously this was discrepant because the number of electrons should be always equal to number of protons and protons cannot be whole atom also be the atom in a sphere of positive charge. After that, uh, Little more advanced theory was given by other courts on the model atoms, which he said that atoms are spherical in shape, electrons revolve around the nucleus, just like planets revolve around the sun. So this model is also called as planetary model, that's why. But the discrepancy in this model was that if electrons revolve around the circular path, then it will lose its energy after every evolution and slowly and slowly it will become weaker and it will be attracted towards the nucleus and the electron will fall into the nucleus and the atom will not exist at all, which is not possible. Further, to overcome this discrepancy, Bohr gave his uh, theory of quantization according to which he said that atoms are spherical in shape, the electrons revolve in a circular discrete path around the nucleus and they cannot follow any spiral path. That means the total angular momentum of the electron in the orbit remains quantized, meaning thereby that electrons can only, only revolve, electrons can only revolve in such circular orbit while its angular momentum is a multiple of any integral or any integer. So this is a there is a mathematical expression given by this uh, by him which was n v r equal to n h by 2 pi, whereas n is the order of the shell 2, 8, 7 and so on. Uh, and uh, sorry, 1, 2, 3 and so on. And uh, h is Planck's constant and 2 pi is a parameter of the circular orbit itself. So after this, uh, there was a problem which was uh, uh, in discussion like if, if according to Bohr's atomic model electrons evolve around the nucleus and the protons are there in the center of the nucleus, then protons being positively charged atoms should repel each other. So why the positively charged atoms not repel each other? It does not repel each other because these protons, they keep on interconverting themselves into mesons. So, the positive meson particle and negative meson particle interconvert the proton and neutron so spontaneously and fastly that they don't get time to repel each other. This was one of the atomic models made by one of my students. He tried to give, give a three dimensional structure. When other students were trying to make the atomic models by giving a two dimensional structure, he thought that no, orbits can be oriented in different other space. And this very thought gave an, gave an idea to the scientists that there is a space around the nucleus where probability of finding itself can be maximum or minimum. So from the concept of orbit, the concept of orbital was developed. So up to class 6, class 6 studies about orbit and so we will start learning about orbital. Yeah, by the three scientists who have got the recent Nobel Prize. You know, their name is uh, uh, Isamu Akashi, Hiroki Amanu and Shoji Nakamura. So what they did is, they took uh, N-type semiconductor and P-type semiconductor. Here you will find that P is, is showing a plate of germanium, in which there is one impurity. One uh, germanium is taken out and one arsenic is put into it. 
So as a result, it becomes pentahalin. And here, just like uh, germanium, silicon of the same group having tetrahalin is uh, used as a C type semiconductor, where one silicon is taken out and one boron is put in, which is trihalin. So there is an electron deficiency here and there is an electron deficiency. We know that the water only flows from, flows from high potential to low potential. So there is a tendency of electron to flow from more concentration to high lower concentration which in biology by the way is osmosis. So here there is no osmosis taking place but, but yeah there is a potential gradient. Potential gradient. Yeah there is a potential gradient. It's not osmosis actually. Yeah that is a physical potential gradient here yeah. is an electronic potential gradient. That also depends on physical gradient. Gradient only. Yeah. So there is an analogy. Potential gradient. There is an analogy. Uh -huh. There is some relation. Mm. So now you will see that there is a difference in the energy, uh, potential energy between these two uh, semiconductors. Now earlier there uh, was no material put in between this. As a result, uh, either heat or electricity or you know sunlight or any other kind of you know light used to be given to excite the electron from lower energy to higher energy. Now these three scientists, what they did together is they have used one magnesium stripe in between. So you know that magnesium is a metal and has electron pool in which the positive kernels of the metals are embedded. So these blue colored particles are showing the kernels and this uh, silver colored uh, base is showing the pool of electrons. So what exactly is showing here? You I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Uh, what is happening here is, uh, it is difficult for this electron to go from here to here. And if, it, if you try to take this electron from here to here, you have to do very high voltage. Hmm. So consumption electricity will be more. So what they did is, they used this magnesium strike. As a result, what happened? 15% less electrical energy is required now. Okay. As a result, you see that the electrons are getting excited, it's going upward. Mm. See, going up is difficult. For that we need rope, we need stairs, we need escalators. But falling down is very easy. Mm. Once the electron is sent up by some or the other method, you will find that the blue, light, blue color is falling down. So when the electron is falling from top to bottom, they are losing energy in the form of blue LED. So that is how the blue LED light is developed. Okay. And 50% less energy is less consumed. Energy is consumed. Very good. So this, this is a small model made with very simple things and very less possible. And I am trying to show that blue light. How, how it was developed. It developed. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is actually a mod model of modified light emitting diode which gives cost effective, cost effective source of light. Blue LED. So I think you liked it. Very much. I liked it like anything. Thank you. Any questions? Jamshed? Yes sir. Yeah. Sir, uh, there's a question that you said that according to Dalton's atomic theory, there's a discrepancy that at atoms cannot be divided further. Yeah. Why is why it is called as discrepan dis discrepancy? Okay, now since you know about subatomic particles, that atoms consist of various subatomic particles, electron, protons, and neutrons. So you might think that atoms can be divided further. Sir, I have light. signals. It is sending dendritic cell to without any interruption. Okay, sir. It's a big mass. It's a big mass. It's a big mass. It's a big mass.